I should have had some elevator music prepared for you all today. I wasn't thinking. <laughs> yeah, to get our Friday morning started. Right, get it Friday, everybody. We just get loose. It's Friday. We have 37 people registered, so that's why I want to just give people a few more minutes to um, come on, and um, we'll get started probably about that 9.05 mark. And then we have all of the panelists have co-host access? Yes, I just changed that. Great, thank you. I know I had to uh, re-log in through Eventbrite because, of course, I never remembered my password. So, <laughs> but that took a little bit. That may be where some of these people are getting lost at. Okay, thank you for that information. And I did check to make sure that they sent one right before the meeting started, uh, clicking on that link. Yeah, it doesn't take you directly to the Zoom link. And I think that's if there's any way to just fire out the Zoom link, that would be ideal for people because then you just click sure, on it. Sure, I can do it. that. Okay, I just shared the Zoom link with um, everyone because I was going to do individual. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the virtual uh, Realtor Breakfast hosted by Ypsilanti Community Schools and MJ Townsend and Associates. We are so happy to have you here today. Um, we hope to provide you with good information in regards to our district, but just other things in regards to realty and buying homes. So again, my name is Taryn Willis. I'm the Marketing and Communication Coordinator for Ypsilanti Community Schools. I'm also the Ypsilanti Club, uh, Rotary Club President, and I see a lot of Rotarians on here, a few that I know. So thank you for joining us. Um, so first, let me introduce MJ Real, uh, Townsend Associates, Janice Townsend. Do you want to say good morning? Good morning. Good morning. I am so excited to see everyone here today. And I hope you all take this information that we receive 
and make sure that everyone in the community takes advantage of it because we were really intentional about making sure that we brought all of these partners together. But we are so happy to see each of you all today. I see a lot of familiar faces uh, from the community and we just hope you all enjoy the event. And then of course, if you have any questions um, once the event is over, each person will provide their contact information. And again, this is a great opportunity for us to move Ypsilanti uh, for it, as well as Ypsilanti Community Schools. Thank you, Janice. So I'm going to introduce our first uh, guest speaker for today. It is uh, my boss, uh, Ms. Alina Zachary Ross, who is the superintendent of Ypsilanti Community Schools. Um, she has been an amazing uh, addition. It's not even addition at this point, because I think we're on year three. <laughs> So um, she has been great. We have loved working with her in our district. Um, so welcome, Miss Alina Zachary Ross. Thank you, Taryn. Thank you um, to all of you for giving us a few moments. We know that in a community, especially you from the realtor side, if the schools are not strong, then it makes it a challenge for you. So we hope to just share with you where we are as a district and how we've um, taking this pandemic um, and being able to be flexible and really become the school for the community. And um, obviously schools can't do anything without its students. So hopefully you can see well, what does school look like in the midst of the pandemic and where we're going and how we feel like we're an asset. I'm going to share my um, screen so that you can, we'll bring our students into the room today with us. Can you see it? Everybody's can see the screen, awesome. So the, this is a picture here, just of um, one of our students last year got best, uh, best in photography award uh, for the 37th annual potential e exhibition. So we all have some pictures that our students have even um, created in this presentation. This is just a little bit about the mission. Again, this is all about students. Everything that we do when we come into this district is about developing mindful, engaged students with a skill set, work ethic, and attitude to be able to contribute to a community that honors their diversity, equality, and justice. We have many learning opportunities for our 3,600 students. And we accept all of our students with compassion. And we have a commitment to meet each child, wherever they are along the spectrum. Our board has five goals and all of it is around this urgency. First, obviously academic achievement. Number two, improving our facilities. I hope as you've driven around, you've seen the wonderful uh, under construction signs and we thank everyone for the sinking fund dollars. We've been able to do some amazing work over while our students work on. Um, some of the things are things that people can't see like we're pla placing roofs, um, our HVAC system. Yet, as you know right now, that's been the most important thing when we look at the CDC guidelines and the sinking funds were allowed us to uh, work on those in each one of our buildings. We're, we're improving culture and climate. We're involved with our community and our board is looking at what additional programs and grade reconfigurations do we need to do to meet the needs of our learners. And during this pandemic, we've really had to create different avenues of learning and different ways of communicating with our families. I know uh, Taryn is going to share about our, uh, our newly redone website that has been amazing, yet there's other things too, like our learning labs. We've partnered with Park Ridge and uh, Washtenaw Community College to open a learning lab. We also have one at Chapel Unite STEM, that's a STEM focused lab, as well as we're in the housing community. So at Hamilton Crossing, there's a learning lab. We found this as a need because some of our families, we know 48197 and 48198 were hit the hardest with COVID. And so we wanted to have accessibility right in the neighborhoods for academic support, breakfast and lunch, access to internet, and mostly so that our students can have that social emotional support. There are social workers at these labs as well. 
we also know that our students can't do well without wonderful, engaged, enlightened staff members, right? During the pandemic, so many of you even know you felt like you were locked in, you weren't yourself. So we found we founded a sunshine committee and this committee um, started last year during the pandemic um, when March, we continued this year and we're gonna just keep doing, um, having this sunshine committee going on. What, do, what did they do? Every Monday, they send a sunshine moment to the staff. They've had the YCS game night, district spirit week, cheers for our peers where uh, staff members highlight each other, a staff cooking and painting night where our own chef Gardner led us in uh, making food. Um, we're having a painting night where we all draw together like that painting with the twist. There's been a grizzly show face-to-face -face celebrations that they've had outdoors, some pay it forward op opportunities upcoming. We're gonna have like a TED talk um, called YCS talk. There's been reading in, um, initiatives, a Twitch for YCS, YCS has got talent. And then the really exciting one, we had a virtual happy hour uh, where we even walked through each other's homes and, and, and did tours. And then lastly, is going to be our Grizzly Awards where we highlight the staff. And when our staff are happy and refreshed, they are, they're the best for our students. And that's why we are promoting self-care, um, physical self-care, social, mental, and emotional. And when we talk about emotional self-care and needs, we know that we've been that uh, per, that it, that community school by also developing the resiliency center over the pandemic. We wanted a one-stop shop, kind of like uh, a Walmart. You know, in every community, if it's rural or not, has a Walmart nearby, and and they you can go there to get so many things. So our resiliency center. Um, Parents can go there to get uh, copies made for school support. They can also go there to help connect with DHHS. If they need housing support, our uh, homeless liaison is there. If they need coats, if they need specific goods like soap and deodorant, we have all of that at our resiliency center. And again, we want to be the, the full needs access place for our families in this community. It's located at the Willow Run campus and Marquand Jackson has done an amazing job with that. But we know a lot happened where students weren't in school and schools just can't be <laughs> schools without students. They're just buildings, right? And our students are what makes everything amazing. At Beatty, this is what school looks like even today. Um, they're still active and, and engaged. That's our earliest learners. They have still go on field trips, yes, but they, they might not be on a bus going somewhere. They had, um, this is a picture of them having going on a virtual field, field trip to the farm. Our students still are innovative and creative. That's them pretending that they're on a boat, <laughs> they're going fishing week. You see them still making projects with their masks on, yet enjoying school. And we know that change is the end result of our true learning. And we believe that our students have learned so much over this pandemic. This was, you remember the hundred day, the first hundred days of school, they still celebrated that as well. Very excited. You can see this young man, he took off his mask to take the picture. And, and when it was isolated, we have mask breaks so that they can again um, acclimate just like we do when we're in our offices. And these are just our wonderful students. Also, uh, you know, parents have been engaged with us so much over this time, uh, over this year. Uh, this is a parent who was taking a picture where they did the March's Reading Month um, for our community reads. They read and were featured on, on that YouTube channel. And many of you have read for that as well. I, along with other staff members, went into the classrooms, not face-to-face, -face, but virtually. Um, still, they have wonderful guest readers from even uh, Congresswoman De Debbie Dingo has been a reader this month. 
University of Michigan has partnered with our uh, students. So they've come in as well. Um, this was the University of Michigan Graduate Society of Women Engineers, and they conducted um, STEM outreach activities. And there you see our students on Zoom interacting with U of M. We also had um, students interacting with people from all over the world. You know, the pandemic could be rough, but it also has been a way for our students to get way beyond Ypsilanti, meeting with folks all over the world. Yet you see, they can, once they came in, they're able to have fun. Technology did not go away. You see here, um, they're learning about ancient Rome and they're continuing to be creative in the midst of the pandemic, focusing on students. This was a kit we gave all of our students kits to take home just in case we have to pivot back. You know, next year we plan on being inside the buildings, but at any time we know now that we might have to pivot. And so life must go on in education and we can do so more creatively. This is one of our students in a community-based program um, because how, how do you do those programs for our, most, our students in most need? They still do and they can enjoy themselves even at the high school. Our robotics program continued. Our robotics coach took the pieces to the homes while the students were out of school and collected the each one of the items that each student made at home and put the robot together. So once they came back, they were able to use their robot. Last night, there was the senior night. Athletics does happen in the pandemic. And that's our senior night for our Lady Grizzlies. And our students, even the seniors, that you know, they might not have the traditional year that they wanted to, but they they're able to give back. This is some students who are getting ready to graduate, but they read for March's reading month in their family and shared their videos with our younger students. One of our students uh, is in the YCH Business Entrepreneurship Program, and he was recognized for his innovation with his Shark Take program. And he was recognized throughout the state with DECA. And he uh, has his membership now into the very competitive Detroit Pistons Youth Council. So we're very proud of him to be able to do that in the midst of the pandemic, and including our culinary arts students. These students are amazing. Yes, they're masked up, yet they're still able to get their certificates. We have one of them who has an internship now at Blaze Pizza. So again, pandemic has um, de delayed us, yet we have moved forward and we continue to move forward um, during, during the pandemic. Again, um, a way that Taryn has been able to do this work. She had a mask up contest. And if you've driven here on Packard Road, you'll see the, the actual billboard, the little banner um, that was created and designed by one of our students. Um, we were involved in Nap at Night as part of the community because we know that this is what we're talking about, resiliency. And our students have been resilient. And last but not least, you're going to see this upcoming um, banner project. Our students created these wonderful, wonderful pieces of art they were supposed to have them shown in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Department of Education. And unfortunately, due to the pandemic, it stopped that program. Yet our students continue to go on and our teachers are very creative. You'll see these posters up on lamp posts throughout Ypsilanti. And these will be these are banners of our amazing students who um, created these artistic designs. And that's the way. YCS is going to continue to not only educate our students, but be integral in the Ypsilanti community. And I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. Our students and staff are ready for 2021-22 school year. And we just can't wait to allow the community to know that our schools are vital, our schools are integral, and our students are the gift to Ypsilanti. Thank you for the opportunity. 
and I'm, I'll, I'll check in the chat if you have questions for me. Thank you, Superintendent Zachary Ross. And yes, if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. And what I'm gonna do right now is just quickly show you our new website. Um, I put the address in the chat too. It's at www.ycschools.us. Um, in the past, we've given hard drives or folders, but we have just revamped our website and the information is readily available for realtors and community members. So please bear with me while I share our screen. All right, so anything that's of importance that is relating to our district, we put it in the YCS announcements, which is a pop-up box. Um, and then when you come on here, you just click off and then it brings you directly to our new website. Um, the changes that we've made is how we have configured information through boxes, but what we think parents and community would like to know immediately. So in the scroller, you'll always have the different um, hot items that are going on in the district. Right now we have the three learning labs. Um, contact information is front and center along with the top five reasons to choose YCS. So all you do is click on that button and then that PDF um, appears. And this is a great tool to let people know what is going on in our schools. And again, every time you come back to this, um, okay, let me click off of it. There we go. So down here, you can click on these boxes to get you directly to important information. Messages from Sup uh, Superintendent Alina Zachary Ross, the schools, human resources, if you have anyone who is interested in applying for jobs in our, uh, in our district, anything for parents and guardians, academics, enrollment. Um, the enrollment button has all of the different programs that or uh, forms that you'll need to enroll, including school profiles, information about our IB and STEM programs, mm. um, also information about WIMA and WIHI. So this is, again, a great tool to use when, uh, sorry, searching for information about our schools. When you move down, the calendar is front and center, along with news announcements, our social media page, and the Board of Education. Um, so again, news, anything that's up to date, what we're talking about in the district is front and center on there. Uh, here's the press release in regards to the students that uh, have the public education art and banners. Um, announcements, click on there, and there's all of the district announcements that are really, again, more focused on certain areas of the district. Facebook, so the latest thing that we posted was yesterday in regards to a community uh, vaccine pop-up clinic. So again, we post on the website, we do email, and then on social media, Board of Education, et cetera. So when you get a chance, check out our website. It's very easy to navigate. What I did wanna show you is the school section too. Um, so this lists all of the schools in our district and you just click on a link. I'll click on uh, Beatty Early Learning Center. And then you can come through and it has all of the contact information, um, our school hours, what's going on calendar wise in their school. Um, so and they most of our schools have a Facebook page. So you can click on that. And again, there's more information regarding our um, their updates for social media. All right. So any questions in regards to the website, you can just uh, send me a little chat. Up next is our athletic director, uh, Lawrence Reeves. Now, I think Lawrence, you've been here three years now, um, maybe going on four actually. So uh, I'm gonna give it to Lawrence to talk about our athletic program at Ypsilanti Community Middle School and Ypsilanti Community High School. Thank you, Taryn. Uh, really glad to be here, appreciate the time. Uh, I just wanna commend Superintendent Zachary Ross on her uh, vivid projection of the district. It, it kind of encompassed a lot of things that are going on here. And we really have some outstanding things that are happening in the district. And it's good that people are starting to know more about the things that we offer. So to, to give a spectrum of the athletic program, I'm going to share my screen. I'm not the best with Zoom. I'm getting better, but hopefully this works. Let's see here. Uh, 
Okay, there we go. All right, so I know that sharing. So athletics at a glance, um, 2020, 2021 for everyone has been something different. Uh, we've heard unprecedented and unprecedented amount of times, and that's not to say that it hasn't been the same for athletics. We started reopening sports in the summer. Uh, once we got the okay to do it from the state and the MHSAA and the district, uh, and with that came COVID prevention, and we made sure that that was our number one priority. We want to make sure that people know that it is safe uh, to come back to sports and to come back to school. Uh, every time we have a, a practice or a competition, we do pre-screening and we use an MHSAA COVID monitoring form. Basically, what that consists of is preliminary questions. Do you have a cough? Do you have a fever, sore throat? shortness of breath. If there's a yes to any of those questions, the kid can't practice. After those questions are asked, then we take the kid's temperature. If they're above 100.3, then they can't practice for that day and need to go get checked out. Because of this, we've been able to continue with athletics. There have been kids who have had cases of COVID, but not directly from playing athletics. We've also uh, done a lot of cleaning and disinfecting more than ever. We've got specific uh, sprays and disinfectant that are known to kill COVID-19. We've promoted face coverings and social distancing with all of our practices and games and go according to what the guidelines are based on the MHSAA and the state. We do contract tracing and reporting with the Washtenaw County Health Department. If there is a case of COVID and, and there's been a few, there's been a few kids who have had it, uh, I believe for this year, this entire year from summer to now, uh, that go to, uh, that participate in athletics have had COVID, they've had to quarantine, but all the kids have been healthy. There's been other times when there's been another team that had a kid test positive for COVID. And we were told that we had to quarantine as a precaution, as well as the other team. All that to say that we've remained safe. We haven't had anybody have any extremely negative effects and we've had full recoveries of anybody who's had it. And that's where the contract tracing and reporting goes uh, in a major way. And our reporters are Superintendent Zachary Ross and our human resources director uh, Sue, who takes care of that, I report to them and they report it to the health department. It's really worked well. Uh, some positive benefits of athletics, physical fitness enhances wellness. I know uh, Coach Willis is a big proponent of wellness and, and, and mindfulness and all those things, but physical fitness is really great for that. Social interaction and controlled environment is more important than ever. Uh, we really wanna get you know kids away from the screen and get them moving. We're looking at screens all day and to get people moving, to get people working athletically is a great thing. And it, it builds for a healthy lifestyle. And athletics gives a person the chance to learn teamwork as a community, but also accountability as an individual. And it's more important now than ever with quarantine, the lack of interpersonal social out, uh, outlets for people to get together and do these things. And as a lot of you know, who participate in athletics or extracurriculars, you can really develop lifelong friendships and memories from doing this. Just to give you a a snapshot of what's going on now. Our winter teams, our boys basketball team, who's coached by our new boys basketball head coach, Charles Ramsey, who started this year. Uh, big, big in the community, community member, alumni, Hall of Fame basketball player here and college coach is our head boys basketball coach. We have senior night tonight uh, for our boys. Uh, you saw a picture of the girls last night. Uh, of course, I was at the game. The girls won by 38 points. It was a great night against Skyline. Uh, but the boys play tonight against Notre Dame Prep, uh, and you can see that online. I'll talk about that a little bit more. District games Tuesday at Lincoln versus Celine. Uh, so boys basketball, exciting things are happening. Wrestling, we have our most senior coach, Claude L. Ruffin, who's been here 17 years uh, and really done a lot with our wrestling program. It's a dying art, but for a kid to learn wrestling, self-defense, martial arts, physical fitness, it all wraps up into that sport. Uh, we have one, we have a few gentlemen, but we have one gentleman in particular who has a chance to really win a, a individual state championship. He's, he's ranked in the, in the state uh, and they're starting their individual districts on Saturday at Novi. So we're really excited about that. Uh, you saw our girls basketball program picture of a few of them, but our head coach girls of girls basketball is Dwayne Scott. As I said, they had a big win last night versus Skyline on senior night and they start their districts Monday at Celine versus Pioneer. We also have Boys Swim and Dive in the winter, who's coached by Stacey Flynn. This program has grown tremendously, uh, and we have a young and growing program. We have a few ninth grade swimmers. We have a middle school swim program that's growing, so we're looking to build this, and it's really been great under coach. So we appreciate it. And I'm going to highlight our coaches and programs here 
uh, because I just want you to know what we have to offer and that Ypsilanti is a place where there's a lot of opportunities. Now, spring sports are about to start Monday, March 22nd. We got boys and girls track who's coached by David Smith, Sean Brandon, Tom Jarima. That's going to happen 345 to 530. I'm very excited about our track program this year. We have new coaches. All three of the coaches are going to be new to uh, coaching track, uh, but not new to it themselves. They've coached it for years, but this will be their first year at Ipsy, and we're really looking forward to it. We've had good um, participation at our, our strength and conditioning sessions, so we're looking forward to track. Girls soccer, we also have a new coach, Sean Grace. He comes to us from Pinckney. He's got a lot of head coaching experience, and he's looking to take the soccer program to another level. Our baseball program ran by Stephen Piazza has done nothing but grow, and we're also looking to foster that. We play softball uh, at the Willow Run Campus. We're at a great field. Coach Dwayne Edwards has been doing our softball program for years. They start Monday, 345 to 530. Uh, our girls' tennis program uh, by uh, Taryn Willis, who's, who's our moderator today, she's been doing a great job of revamping the program. Our numbers for our girls' tennis program are bigger uh, than they have been in years. The girls are excited, and we're really looking forward to a great season. Coach Willis has done a great job. Uh, of bringing that together. She has a real passion for tennis uh, as well. We also have boys golf uh, with John Kim. He's a teacher in the district uh, and several several coaches here are teachers and we believe as teachers as coaches, but for boys golf, a great sport to learn. As many of you know, uh, we do offer that and we encourage boys to golf. A lot of times the kids shy away from it because they think it's something they can't attain, but we give you all of the equipment. We give you the uh, golf course time and it's a great opportunity for kids to get involved with. So some of those things are happening in spring. Of course, fall, uh, our football program ran by Coach Dan Brown, another amazing alumni who's coached here for years uh, and has a lot under his belt as far as the football coach community. I was talking to Coach Brown. We're really looking to get into the elementaries and, and try to start a flag football program uh, so we can really reach into our younger kids. And that's going to be the focus. The focus has been kind of getting the facilities up to par and getting things on track and organized. But now we're really looking to dig deep into our, our population from elementary all the way up to high school. And we want to start that with football for boys and girls flag football and working on that this year. Also, some other sports are volleyball coached by teacher John Kim. Boys soccer has grown tremendously under Georgie Nozadze. Uh, we have boys tennis as well, coached by Madeline Gray. Girls swim and dive is also coached by Coach Flynn, who coaches the boys. Uh, Steven Piazza, who's the boys baseball coach, coaches girls golf as well. And in fall, we have sideline cheer, who's coached by Destiny Mack. With fall being the furthest out, I'm going to spend the least time on that, but just letting you know what we have to offer. And there are 16 varsity sports that we do offer here at Ypsilanti Community, Community Schools. And that goes down to the middle school sports. Uh, right now, girls basketball is still in session. They're going to play a home game tomorrow. There's a round robin uh, here actually at the high school. Our coaches are Isaiah Daniel and Dave Denson, really committed to the girls. Uh, we also have middle school wrestling, uh, and that's coached by Sin Q. Carter and Darius Brandon. Boys, girls, a boys and girls track and field begins on Tuesday at the high school track, and that's going to also be coached by Dwayne Scott. If you're noticing, we have some coaches who work with all different types of teams, but that shows their passion. And I can't say enough about the coaches here at YCS because it really is a passion. We haven't been at the top of wins uh, in the wind column in all of our sports. But what we're doing is growing. We're giving lifelong lessons to kids and we're making our programs better so that we can be at that level eventually. Boys basketball is also offered. You see Coach Brown and Smith. Football is by Coach Jones in, in the fall, as well as volleyball by Coach Ware and sideline cheer with Shawan Hardy uh, for middle school sports. So we have a lot going on from high school to middle. And as I said, we want to transition into uh, the elementaries. Our facilities. We have a brand new gym floor. Uh, my, my PowerPoint's not going to be as eloquent as the superintendents with the pictures, uh, but we do have uh, a lot of opportunities for you to see that on the website. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. But our new gym floor, it was put in last year. Uh, everybody that comes and see it sees the floor, thinks it looks phenomenal. There's a wall-mounted camera that uh, videotapes our games. So you can see all of the home games that we've had on YouTube if you go to YCS website. And we also are able to live stream our games that are that are played at home uh, through the YCS website. We got this last year before the pandemic, and it was a great investment because who knew that 
a majority of our fans wouldn't be able to come to games, but having that camera has been really great for families to be able to see uh, their loved ones play and students to be able to see their, their peers play. And it's really great. Uh, a lot of people love turf, but we got landscape grass uh, for game and practice fields and grass is the safest thing. Our grass on our soccer fields and our uh, football fields are great uh, and make sure that it's safe for, for kids. Our facilities crew does a great job in keeping those together. Full service weight room, pool. We're looking to do some tennis court renovation. We have new nets and we're also looking to uh, fix that court up uh, as well as the pool that's being renovated as well. Our baseball and softball fields, I've told you about our Willow Run softball field and our baseball field is very spacious, but our facilities group keeps all of our landscaping really together and also the wrestling room. So the facilities are, are, are top par for all of our athletes. And we also make sure that we have all the resources they need with equipment and uniforms as well. So we try to keep our athletes in a world-class situation. Spectators and tickets, as you know, with COVID things have changed, but currently the rule is that you can have a 375 uh, indoor spectator capacity. That's uh, finishing up and we've done well. We never hit that mark. We, we didn't even, um, you know, come close to 300 this year because we were just trying to phase back in. But next year, as things progress, we're looking to get people back in the stands in a major way. Uh, we're following state updates for crowd limitations. And another thing we've done to be preventative is online cashless ticketing through GoFan. This prevents the exchange of money and the exchange of germs during this pandemic time. So people are able to buy tickets online before a game, come to the game, tap the ticket on their smartphone and they get in. No cash exchange and it keeps account of spectators as well. So we're really liking the things that are happening with that. Um, and why, why CS? And, and when we're talking to realtors, you can rest assured and let them know this school has, has sports, it has activities. We have a band, we have robots, we have everything you need. And I think, you know, changing the perception, if there is any negative connotation with perception, it needs to turn to positive because why YCS is the place for our community's children. You can buy a home in YCS, live a good life and go to a great school district. We want people to know that. And we use athletics as a vehicle to improve life and academic achievement. A lot of our athletes, as you know, online learning has been tough on our kids. We've seen it in the grades at the high school. But with that being said, when, they, when, the, when the coaches are able to pour into the kids about getting their grades up, doing study tables, and having a focus on pride in their academics, builds them up because they have something to play for. We want Ypsilanti to be the first choice of Ypsilanti residents. So if somebody moves here with school of choice, there's all kinds, types of options, but this should be an option number one. Because of our, you know, if we're talking about athletics, we have dedicated professional coaches, multiple sports programs that are offered free of charge. You go to different places, you're talking about $300 to pay a sport, sometimes $350. The lowest I've heard in the area is $250, but that's $250 per sport. Whereas we embrace our community and want to get our kids participating, <clears throat> so we offer, offer every sport free of charge. And in this community, it's a deep tradition of community pride in athletics. Uh, there's community pride in every aspect of life, but we have really deep pride uh, in history for the Braves, for the Flyers, and for the Grizzlies, and we're stronger together. And that's what we want to bring is that pride of Ypsilanti back and, and keep it that way. And, and in doing that, it's going to increase participation and performance. And we're really looking forward to the future because we know that it is bright. So with all of those things being said, uh, I, I just want to say again that I am elated to be a part of this team. I look at everything from a team aspect. And you can rest assured that Ypsilanti Community Schools from academic programs to athletic programs are rising up. And uh, we look forward to working with you and, and, and having you work with us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lawrence, for that great presentation. Yes, I love coaching tennis. Um, it's my way to give back to the community. Uh, we have lots of girls from um, Ypsilanti Community High School, but then also Y High. So, you know, we're growing. And I have to say that um, our, athletic, our athletic director is very supportive of the coaches and the students. So kudos, thank you. All right, as we move forward, I'm going to um, just put some more things in the chat for you to utilize uh, while we're uh, chatting. But next we have uh, Cassandra Sharif, who is our principal at Ypsilanti International Elementary School, which we call WISE. WISE is our international baccalaureate program. Uh, and she will give us a rundown of what's going on over there. Cassandra? Yeah, good morning. Thank you for uh, having me. 
It's a pleasure to be here. As uh, Taryn mentioned, my name is Cassandra Sharif, principal of WISE. We are a K-5 authorized International Baccalaureate Primary Years Program, IBPYP. Um, and um, as our superintendent, Zachary Ross, mentioned all of the supports and services that we have in place, and especially providing um, in-person instruction during a medical pandemic. Our students transitioned back in uh, March 1st, and it has been amazing. Um, it's, it's exciting the, um, to see the so many things that our district offers, not just for a few students, but for all of our students to support their learning um, and to meet their individualized needs from one-to-one -one, um, devices, um, school supplies, book bags, materials, curriculum for every child, free. Um, free breakfast, free lunch, free snacks, and free food that each student can take home um, every day to make it through that Thursday until we see them again on Monday. It has been amazing seeing our students transition in. They are safe, learning, engaged, and more importantly, happy. WISE is one of four elementary schools um, in YCS. Um, and what I love about um, all of our elementary schools is that we all have a different culture and climate to meet the diverse needs of our students and communities. Um, and it's so any school that you go to in, in YCS, it, it's, it's an awesome. But why WISE? Again, we are K-5 authorized IB school. WISE is committed to creating lifelong learners who are open-minded, caring, and responsible members of a global society. Our purpose is to create a safe and caring community where all students can grow socially, emotionally, academically. We are a village of parents, teachers, students, and community members to produce successful citizens. Our IBPYP program are for students from kindergarten through fifth grade, so that's age five through 12. And it's a curriculum and framework that develops the whole child. Our curriculum lays the foundation for the IB middle years program, which is sixth through 10th grade. And more importantly, our, our program prepares students to be active, caring, and lifelong learners. At WISE, every teacher is trained and certified to carry out the IB curriculum framework um, and instructional practices in their classroom. We provide a curriculum that's designed to meet the needs of all students. And our teaching method is inquiry-based learning, where students are involved in their learning, the teachers act as facilitators, the curriculum is structured around projects. And so it's a hands-on learning process where students form questions, they investigate research and build their own new understanding. And research shows that the inquiry-based learning approach helps students to be more creative, they're more positive, they're independent, and it academically improves their overall achievement. So at WISE, you'll get a K through five program option, including young fives, a K-12 IB education. As we partner and collaborate with Wyman Waihai, our students have priority enrollment into that school. We offer Spanish classes for students starting kindergarten through fifth grade, unified arts for all of our grade levels, which includes music, PE, art, Spanish, and science, and sports that uh, Lawrence Reese talked about earlier. We have kids clubs, Spanish, YMCA, Bright Futures, and more, a full range of special education services in the least restrictive environment. We are a family and community environment, and we have a loving, caring, and highly qualified staff. Our 21-22 school year application opens April 5th. You can apply online at www.ycschools.us on our WISE webpage. And there is limited space, so don't wait. Thank you, Cassandra, that was great. <laughs> It is limited space. Um, so, you know, once we put that out there, the applications start coming in quickly. So again, thank you for that information in regards to WISE, great presentation. So before I turn it over to Janice and we start talking about um, the other things on our agenda, I just wanna let you know that um, Ypsilanti Community Schools is going to be kicking off a boots on the ground marketing campaign. And it's actually 
already kind of kicked off because these were one of this is one of the events that we had planned. Um, but we are going to be going into our communities with our community partners and just having great activities in the summer, knocking on doors and just reminding our Ypsilanti residents that we are here, as Lauren said, as the first choice. Um, it is very important for us to make sure that our residents in Ypsilanti know the options that we have at Ypsilanti Community Schools, all the way from academics, uh, extracurricular activities, um, just our community support. Uh, that is a really big deal for us. So I'm going to put a link in there in regards to our presentation. We have a couple of concerts that are gonna be uh, coming with the Ann Arbor Summer Festival that we're gonna participate in uh, in the near future, plus some other big summer events that we're working out the logistics because we always, always, always put our staff, kids and community first and wanna make sure that everything is safely done. So with that, I want to just say thank you for listening to our presentation uh, in regards to Ypsilanti Community Schools. And again, if you have any questions, please feel to ask at the end during our question and uh, answer period or uh, the information, uh, my contact information is in the chat. And before I leave, I would be remiss to say uh, that we have one of our current board members on, Maria Goodrich. So good morning to her. And then we actually have one of our former board members on, uh, Maria Sheeler Edwards. So good morning to you too. Uh, they have both been a great support to our community and um, our school district. So thank you both ladies. All right, Janice, you're on. Tell us about Mark, uh, realtors and banking options and programs that are in uh, Washtenaw County for Ypsilanti residents. Thank you, Taryn, uh, for the, the pass off like they do in track. Um, and thank you, YCS. It was a wonderful presentation. And again, we want to just make sure that everybody understands that YCS is the place to be for your children. And one thing that I want to make sure that everybody understands that is going to be incorporated throughout this whole presentation is the word community, the word resilience, the word uh, partners, community partners, all of those different things, family. That's why, why Ypsilanti is so important. So my presentation will be very short because I want to make sure that everyone on here uh, gets the really the information that uh, the additional information they need in regards to funding opportunities out there, uh, the current market, um, also information for investors in regards to um, funding opportunities in uh, the landlord rental program with section eight. So why Ypsilanti? Well, of course, we just talked about what the first thing is why is our schools and what they have to offer. But the next thing is the number one thing is the name. <laughs> If you're going to be selling real estate in Ypsilanti, know how to pronounce the name. We are very sensitive to what that word means. Uh, it is Ypsilanti. And um, I had this little video on here from Ipsy Real, which is one of our uh, community partners, uh, and, and they pronounced it well. And so it's on YouTube. And I didn't even realize how many uh, videos are out there to talk about how to pronounce the word Ypsilanti or Ipsy. And so when you're talking to people a lot of times that are moving into the area, they're trying to figure out like, how do you say this? And they say Yipsy and Ipsy and all these other things. So as a professional, it is always good to make sure that you pronounce the name. And then that tells us that you're not visiting, that you are actually part of the community. So that's just my little joke for today, it's Friday. Okay, next thing, the history. So in order to be able to be successful in this market, you have to understand the history and why we are where we are today versus where we were in the past. Um, a lot of times, you know, we have other um, communities that surround Ypsilanti and we often get compared to those uh, communities, but Ypsilanti is unique in itself. And it's actually uh, Mayor Lois Richardson, she plugged this a long time ago. It is the best kept secret in Southeast Michigan. So going back in time, Woodruff Grove and all this information that I learned in Ypsilanti schools, um, Woodruff Grove started Ypsilanti, Woodruff Grove is now Depot Town. Uh, we have where Reach Church is, is Brown Chapel. That was one of the, that and Second Baptist Church on the South Side. Those are the oldest African-American churches in the state. Okay. Um, of course, our water tower, Bomber Restaurant, uh, 
Park Ridge Community Center, Perry School, um, the Bomber Plant. And then of course, at one point, uh, Ypsilanti was the, had the largest automotive manufacturing plant, which was the GM powertrain or GM, we called it hydromatics in the nation. So when that in Ford, when the market crashed and Ford and GM somewhat left the community, it did a, a, a major uh, crash in our community where people lost their homes, they lost their jobs. However, Ypsilanti is a resilient community. And even in the midst of that, we triumph and now we're bringing things back. Our education is strong. Um, our medical, you know, St. Joe Hospital, Eastern Michigan U University, Washtenaw Community College, our trades program that we have in those universities and things like that. We are still a strong and resilient community. We're getting entrepreneurship in this area is at an all time high. And so there are so many different programs and things out there that have since flourished in this community and has made us even more resilient today. So those are things that if you're gonna be selling in this area, it's good to always know the history because when people come to a community, they wanna figure out, you know, why is this place so special? Everybody in Ypsilanti, and I guarantee you I'm right, and anybody on here, if I'm, I'm not telling the truth, please put it in the chat. Everybody in Ypsilanti knows everybody. It does not matter if you're color, race, background, everybody knows everybody in Ypsilanti and everybody is related to everybody in Ypsilanti. And that's a good thing because that's, again, it further incorporates that word family. We are all connected by this community. So the third thing is there's a ton of opportunity uh, that is coming to this area or that is currently in process. The city of Ypsilanti has been working tirelessly on the Water Street Development Project that is supposed to bring in new businesses, new housing to the downtown area. We all know this area um, has been pretty much vacant for 20 plus years. And this is an opportunity for us to have the city uh, grow and uh, become what it once was. And, and, and it's in the process of doing that. So as a realtor, it is our responsibility to make sure that, and as a community uh, member, to be engaged in what is going on. When we're, all of these things affect what our housing market will do. A strong economic system depends on real estate, schools, and infrastructure. Superior Township is going to be breaking some ground soon in April for the new district library. That will be over off of the Harris Road as well as near um, in the Willow Run where the current mark, current position uh, place, placement is, but it'll be uh, servicing that Willow Run community. Ypsilanti Township has a master plan where they're going to be widening up Wired Road, the E-Course Road corridor, and those areas are considered opportunity zones. So I look, I encourage you all to um, do your research um, in regards to all of the different opportunities that are out there and how this is going to further progress our community and our schools. Again, all of these things are motivating us to do better in the community. Entrepreneurship is big. There is no other community in Washtenaw County where you can come and actually have more opportunity to be an entrepreneur. I can tell you on all, I know at least 10 entrepreneurs just by naming off close friends and family. Every, everybody in Ypsilanti is pretty much an entrepreneur. And that's what goes back to that word of resiliency. We are always trying to figure out how to do better within our community and to um, em embrace entrepreneurship as a whole. The Ypsilanti DDA, Downtown Authority, Michigan Works, uh, Small Business Association, Economic Development Corporation, Eastern Michigan University, Spark, and WCC all have great programs for our small businesses. And if you are in the process of trying to become a real estate investor, um, I encourage you to check out these websites um, and grant opportunities that are out there that can help you navigate a, a successful road of entrepreneurship entrepreneurship and also make sure that you are have going to have a successful business long term. Now what can we say about the community? 
everybody in Ypsilanti, every community has a story, a history. I grew up on many sides of Ypsilanti and every side is special and is unique. I grew up on the South side. I later uh, moved to North Lawn right down the street um, from Ypsilanti High School. And now I'm a resident of the Sugar Brook community. And again, the word is family, community, resiliency, positivity, all of those different things. Every community has a story and every community embraces its own culture. And as a realtor, we have to be aware of every different neighborhood because each of them offers something unique. And just as uh, the principal of Wise, Ms. Cherie said, every school has its own culture, but all of the schools has one goal in mind, and that is to produce productive young citizens in this community. And hopefully they will bring that, that uh, productivity back and do something positive. So what I wanna do next is to introduce our next speaker, but I wanna just put that little tidbit in, is you please study the history of Ypsilanti, because I guarantee you, you as a realtor will become love this community as much as I do. I'm a native of Ypsilanti. I went through Ypsilanti schools. And again, there's nothing like home. And so I'm going to now introduce to you um, some of our home buyer education uh, program leaders from Habitat for Humanity. They do a great job. If you ever have any questions for me, I'll put my contact information in the chat. Um, and if you have questions in regards to different programs, organizations out there that can help you become even more of a successful realtor in this community, please give me a call. Again, we are all in it together. And I know if the real estate community is more engaged and is participating on a more significant level, we can do great things in this community. So next, I would like to introduce our home buyer education educators uh, from Habitat for Humanity, Latanya Fair and Crystal Caboose. If you could please, I'm gonna stop sharing my slide. I'm still learning, this is Zoom thing, okay. And they will take over and they have some great programs out there for your clients. And Crystal, Latanya, it's all on you. Perfect, um, let me just get mine set up here. Okay, um, as Janice said, um, I'm Crystal Caboz from Habitat for Humanity. Um, and then we have Latanya Fair, who um, is also with Habitat. She, Latanya is our um, HUD certified housing counselor on staff. Latanya is amazing. She brings a wealth of knowledge from her um, experience um, as a previous shelter director for many, many years. Um, we, we make a pretty good team. So um, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about what we do offer in our um, housing counseling and why that is so important for first time home buyers and even sometimes second time home buyers that maybe didn't get this kind of education. Um, <clears throat> again, we're Crystal and Latanya. Um, so we are in the last, it's going to be two years in June, we um, will be, that's when we got our HUD certification and HUD approval um, for Habitat to be an agency of HUD. Um, so what that has allowed us to do is offer um, home buyer education. Um, and that, you know, those words kind of pack a lot in. Um, so I'm gonna unpack some of that. Um, the pre-purchase and home buyer education is a group course. Um, it is a two-part class, and each of those classes is three hours. Um, we hold those classes monthly, um, and this course provides a certificate of completion that is good for one year. So anyone who is looking to um, purchase a home and maybe they're using down payment assistance or um, certain types of loans, USDA, FHA, MISHTA loans. Mm. It's a requirement that they um, have this home buyer education for them to access those products. Um, that course, um, we always bring in our professionals. MJ is one of them. Um, we always have a realtor 
um, that talks to the participants about how to find a realtor, what to expect from a realtor, what they're going to expect from you, what the market's looking like, and how to best be successful in shopping for a home. Um, we also bring in, we have someone speak about our Habitat homeownership program. Um, and then in the second session, we have a lender come on and speak about the various loan products that they may qualify for, those ones that I just mentioned, MISHTA, FHA, VA, Rural Development, um, mm. and giving them a, um, you know, it's hard to dig in and give all the information of, oh, yes, you might qualify, but a broad overview of here's kind of the basic guidelines for those credit scores and things like that. Um, so that class, as I said, that certificate is good for a year. They're going, their lender is very likely going to request that if they're going any after any of those products. Um, if, let's say, their home buying process takes more than a year, they get a hold of myself or LaTanya, and LaTanya will do a refresher with them and recertify them. That refresher is usually about an hour. Um, the next class that we have is a money management group education class. Um, it is a four part class um, at an hour and a half each class. Um, and now we hold those quarterly. Um, we are looking to get more people into those classes, that class specifically. Our pre-purchase class, they can be quite large like last night. Um, but the money management, it's a, um, Talking, it can go from basic to a little more um, in depth. Banking, credit, budgeting, um, you know, and just that really basic foundation to get you maybe to move towards being ready for homeownership. Um, then, right now, due to COVID um, and the nature of the next class is a home maintenance workshop, um, it's very hands on. And so we're not able to offer that class right now. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to offer it in the last year, but we're looking to try to move it maybe in a way that we can do something virtually that still is meaningful to people. Um, so it is a two hour class and it provides like the basic home maintenance skills, when to change your furnace filters, um, how to patch, you know, a small drywall hole, um, Sometimes they've even gotten into some plumbing stuff and how to use the little snake drains just to, you know, empower people to not have to call expensive repairmen when it's maybe unnecessary. Um, <clears throat> and then one of the other big pieces of our services is the one-on-one -on -one counseling. And as I mentioned to you, um, LaTanya is our counselor. She's, she is the meat of our program. And um, the counseling can be for people looking to buy a home. It can be for maybe a renter who is struggling and paying high rent and they're needing, you know, some budgeting help or they're trying to get into maybe more affordable renting. Um, it could just be someone who says, hey, I, I'm not good at budgeting. I need some help here. I need, I need to lower my debts. I need, you know, I have this thing that's popping up on my credit report. Can we look at that? How do I manage that? Um, and then just setting those financial goals. When someone meets with Latanya one-on-one, -on -one, um, I always kind of, re, you know, she's, we refer to her as Mama Latanya. She kind of takes you under her wing and, you know, she guides you through. Um, so, all of those services under our housing counseling are free. They are open to anyone um, who needs those services. So we encourage people to promote those and contact us for those. Um, this is the other thing I feel very passionate about. I've been in, I've been with Habitat for almost 15 years and I, I used to oversee our home ownership program. And so I could see when people were applying and they were denied, we had nowhere to send them. 
um, MSU Extension was the um, housing counseling agency at the time. We would send them to their classes, but that one-on-one -on -one counseling was not there in our community. Um, and so I had started just doing it on top of my other role, not the true housing counseling, but more um, financial management skills building. And just a few little things that I, the reason I feel that it's important is, um, you know, one in five people have an error on their credit report. And that one error can disqualify them from opportunities such as housing, employment, sometimes higher payments that they, that aren't necessary. And a lot of the times they're not even aware of it. Um, access, as I mentioned before, some of these loan and down payment assistance products require home buyers to complete a home buyer education course. Um, and then lower default rates, you know, obviously research show, shows that first time home buyers who receive home buyer education are 15 to 30% less likely to face default or foreclosure. Um, and then one third of the population underestimate the total household debt they have and misunderstand how mortgage payment requirements work. And to me, that's, that's important um, that they have those um, skills and if they don't, that they know where to go to get them. Um, so that, I'm just going to pause for a second. That is our housing counseling and education program at Habitat. The other thing I encourage people is our Habitat is, um, fully loaded of programs from our home ownership program to furnace replacement and test and tunes. Um, we do have a veterans program. We do have an aging in place program, um, a um, home improvement program. So I did put our website on here and I will put our contact information in the chat box. Any of your clients that you're working with, if you know, even if maybe they already own a home or anyone in the school districts, you know, the majority of our homes are in the 48198 and 48197. Um, and we, we, that's the majority of our work. Um, so always direct them to us if there's any of those needs and the proper staff will check it out. And if we can work with them, we will. So thank you guys for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. And we will, I'll put my information in that chat box. Thank you, Crystal and Latanya. We appreciate you both. Um, just a, another tidbit that I need people to understand is that these edu this education program is good for anybody. I send all of my clients to this class. I don't care if they're making over $400,000. If it's a first time home that they're purchasing, it's good for them to understand the process and it uh, makes my job much easier. I have not had one client that went through this class not get a home. So that's how great this program is. And also just what people need to understand is Washtenaw County is one of the richest counties in the state. And so even to get down payment assistance, if you have a family of three or more, if you earn a, a combined income of about 141,000, they still qualify for down payment assistance. And you know, I don't know about you, that's a lot of money. And then even from one to two people, it's still, I believe, around 120,000. Um, but your lender and Habitat can give you more information about that. Um, so next, we're going to move it along. I just want to do a side note. We were supposed to have uh, Michael Ludecker from Flagstar here today, but he had an emergency. However, we do have um, Old National Banks, um, Amy Matson. she's a community development manager, senior loan officer. I'm probably through some more titles, but she'll clarify that. And what we were very intentional about with having both of these lenders is that both of these lenders offer similar products, but they also have individual unique programs that they offer buyers as well. Flagstar Bank is one of the largest uh, lending institutions in the nation. I used to work for them, so I know that information. But also Old National Bank also has a large lending capacity as well. And so Amy, 
uh, if you could go ahead and we can get started with you and then we'll be bringing on uh, Juanisha Brand, who is the Ann Arbor Housing Commission Director of Operations and she'll be talking about the uh, Section 8 program and the opportunities that they have as well. All right, thank you, Denise. It's a very wonderful presentation. So thank you for inviting me to be part of this. I am gonna share a little bit about the programs that we offer and it goes very nicely with what Crystal was mentioning. Um, so let me get this slideshow going. Okay. So as you said, my name is Amy Madsen. My official title is Community Development Mortgage Loan Officer. It is kind of a mouthful. So um, what that really means is that I work with first time home buyers and low to moderate income buyers. So that's my specialization as a mortgage lender. And the really amazing thing, especially when we're looking at Ypsilanti, is that we have some wonderful lending programs we can offer. Um, so there's a wide range of them. I'm not going to go into every single loan program today, but you can see on this slide just a few. Um, we do offer the Federal Housing Administration Mortgage. You'll hear that called FHA. We do offer VA loans. We offer MISHTA loans. So that's that Michigan State Housing Development Authority. And then we also have some specialized programs, which we'd call our portfolio programs, including this top one, our home manager mortgage. So I'll get a little bit more into these. Um, starting out with MISHTA, that is a commonly known place to find down payment assistance. So I think a lot of people, if they're looking for down payment assistance, they might think MISHTA first, which is great. Um, especially even for Washtenaw County, you don't necessarily have to even be a first time home buyer. And they can offer you up to $10,000 in the form of a down payment assistance loan in certain zip codes. So 48197 and 48198 are included in that list. They newly enhanced that to 10,000. And what that is, it's what we call a soft second mortgage. And so what that means is it is a loan, but it's a 0% interest loan. And so you do not make payments on that while you're living in the house and repaying your first mortgage. It's basically just sort of there in the background. And it can really give first time home buyers that leg up to get them those funds they need to make that initial purchase especially in the market that we're facing right now where we're not relying on sellers to provide closing costs. We're not relying on them to give closing concessions. Um, you're gonna need any funds that you may have saved up potentially towards your closing costs. So if this can be used towards your down payment assistance or even some of it can go towards closing, I think that could give you a real advantage. So as Denise mentioned, the income limit caps for this are, are fairly high. Um, so I think a lot of people would be surprised to find out, you know, how much they actually could get. Um, so that's definitely something to keep in mind for your first time and even repeat home buyers for Ypsilanti. Um, and then our home manager program, that is that portfolio loan I mentioned, and this is a really amazing product. This is only for first time home buyers, and it does have different income limit requirements than MISHTA. So the cap on this one is a little bit lower. But if you are a first time home buyer and you fit into this category, you can qualify for a home manager mortgage and you can avoid making payments towards monthly private mortgage insurance. So that really gives frees up more of your payment every month to go towards your mortgage instead of spending on private mortgage insurance. So with as little as 3% down, not having private mortgage insurance could be a real advantage for a first time home buyer. And the rates are very low on this. Um, the one thing I would mention is that an inspection will be required to be reviewed by us as the lender. And if there are issues, the seller must remedy those before we would be able to close. So that's a good thing, obviously, if we have a new home buyer, we don't want them moving into a property where it's not safe for them. But it's just something to be aware of for that program. We also offer another version of this called Home Manager Purchase Rehab. And this is amazing in when we're looking at properties that maybe need some work up front. So they found this great location, but this home needs to have something redone on it or overhauled. Maybe it's the plumbing. This can help them get financing so that they can make that home ownership dream a reality. So this is a similar program to the home manager. It just has a little bit more stringent requirements. But the nice thing is it's all one loan program. So you purchase it and renovate it. There's only one loan closing. 
you have a period of up to 12 months while that renovation is being completed before you would move in. During that time, you're making interest only payments. So you're probably still renting, you know, nearby. But then once that's done, you're going to move into that home and it's going to convert to a full regular mortgage. And that goes up to 95% loan to value. So they only need to be contributing 5% down for that purchase. So another great program we can offer. And then we do have wonderful down payment assistance options as well, not just the MISTRA. We also have access to other funds. So we have our old national bank down payment assistance, and this is actually a grant. So where that differs from MISTRA is MISTRA is the loan that's sort of in the background while you're paying off your regular mortgage. This old national down payment assistance comes as a grant. So it's actually forgivable on closing and it's up to 3% of your purchase price. And th those funds are only available for Ann Arbor or Ypsilanti. So Ypsilanti is definitely a great place to buy. And, and this again is for first time home buyers in low to moderate income categories. And then coming up in April, we also have access to what we call Philby. That stands for Federal Home Loan Bank of Indianapolis. Old National Bank is a member of that institution. So we have access to their HOP funds and that's home ownership opportunity. And that will be a, contribute an additional $5,000 in specific cases. So those actually could be paired together. And again, that could really give a leg up in getting started, coming up with some down payment funds to get our first time home buyers going. So why would you want to work with a community development mortgage lender? We offer all of those programs that I mentioned. We also have a real focus on education as well. So we do a casual once a month home ownership WebEx. It's not going to be as in-depth as like your Habitat for Humanity, but it's another way to increase awareness. And we discuss the ratios that lenders use to qualify you. We talk about the steps to home ownership, and those are also free and available to anyone. They don't have to necessarily be an old national bank client. They don't have to apply for a loan. Anyone is welcome to attend those. I offer those with my coworker who is a financial empowerment coach. And it's just another way to increase awareness and help people get comfortable in, you know, in what will probably be maybe the biggest purchase of their lifetime is buying that home. And the other piece of my specific role is that I am enabled to take time with each client. A traditional lender is going to need to continuously turn over loans. That's just how the nature of that role works, where you're, you're constantly kind of moving along through your loans. In my specific role, the bank has empowered me to take as much time as I need with each client. So a lot of times that may mean maybe we do decline at the first time that they apply, but we continue that conversation. If they are willing to hear it, we will go really in depth talking about things on their credit report. What are the action steps that they need to get where they want to be long term? So that's really the focus is the long term nature of the relationship. And then um, we also have a full, range of, a full range of other mortgage experts. So if you're not right for me, I will be able to refer you to someone else at Old National that can help you out with your Ypsilanti home purchase. Here's a few dates of our upcoming workshops. Um, I know we're kind of brushing through this, so please contact me if you'd like to get signed up or you just have more questions. You can always visit my website, which is oldnational.com slash Matson. And then I can also be found, I'll put my information in the chat. I'd love to talk to anyone. I'm, you know, even if you're not ready to apply, I definitely just love to hear from you. And thank you so much for your time today. Okay, at this time, we're gonna go ahead. We have about 10 to 15 more minutes. We wanna get at least five minutes in for questions. We're gonna have Juanisha Brand from Ann Arbor Housing Commission talk to us about win-win opportunities with Section 8. You're on mute, Juanisha. Thank you for that, I apologize. Um, thanks for having me. Um, here at the Ann Arbor Housing Commission, we have several programs. Um, we service all of Washtenaw County, including Monroe County. Um, however, the majority of our Housing Choice Voucher residents, they actually live in the Ypsilanti area. So about 97% of our voucher holders, 
reside in the city of Ypsilanti and Ypsilanti Township. What I have on the screen here, um, and can you guys just confirm that you can see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Um, instead of doing a PowerPoint presentation, I wanted to present to you our website. Our website has tons of information about all of the different um, programs that we offer. And oftentimes when we speak to not just um, realtors, landlords, or program participants and uh, various community partners, a lot of the information that we have presented in the presentations, they sort of get lost. So I want to direct everyone to our website. You can do a simple Google search, City of Ann Arbor Housing Commission, Ann Arbor Housing Commission, um, Washtenaw County Section 8 vouchers, and our website will pop up. You can find information again about both our rental assistance programs as well as our home ownership programs. So I want to speak to you a little bit briefly about our rental program. As I mentioned, the majority of our rental participants reside in um, Ypsilanti. So <clears throat> with the focus being on Ypsilanti, this is a great opportunity to recruit landlords. And there are some myths that goes along with the, the Section 8 program. Um, some folks believe that in the Section 8 program, landlords do not have the opportunity of charging um, affordable rents or comparable rents to the market. And that's a myth that's simply not true. Uh, you can charge whatever rent you like. However, if that rent is exceeding the fair market rent for the community or um, comparable units, then no, we will not be able to approve a rent at that actual rate. Um, there's also a misconception that uh, if you participate in the program, you as a landlord participate in the program, you cannot apply any of the landlord tenant laws, which again, that is absolutely false. You absolutely can apply all of the landlord tenant laws Participants of the Section 8 program are not exempt from any um, local, state, or federal landlord-tenant laws. <clears throat> There's a, a number of benefits in uh, participating as a landlord in the Section 8 program. Um, obviously, one of those benefits is guaranteed rental payment from the Housing Commission. In addition, uh, we offer regular inspections of the unit. And, and you can also request a special inspection of your unit. And that's um, a great benefit because oftentimes landlords just don't have time to inspect their units or particularly if you are a smaller landlord um, and depending on what the, what the local ordinances are, you may not necessarily have to have a city inspection but with, if you participate in the Housing Commission's uh, rental program, you will have regular inspections of your unit. Um, and with those inspections, one of the other misconceptions is that landlords are not able to actually charge the tenants for any sort of damage to the unit, which is absolutely not true. You absolutely can charge damages to the unit. The inspection helps identify some of those damages, prior to the family moving out. So um, that's also a great benefit to landlords. And um, by participating on the rental side of the program, you can assure that your tenant is receiving support from the Ann Arbor Housing Commission and not just support from the Ann Arbor Housing Commission, but several other community partners. So the Ann Arbor Housing Commission partners with a number of agencies and departments throughout the throughout Ypsilanti as well as Washtenaw County. And we do that so we can make sure that we're providing adequate support to our families. Um, one of the reasons is to assure that they have the necessary skills and tools to be um, good renters, but we also want to encourage our families to be more self-sufficient and propel into home ownership if that is a choice. Um, the Ann Arbor Housing Commission does have a home ownership program. 
as you can see here on the screen, this is um, the link to our home ownership program. And there's some information for participants as well as information for lenders and realtors. So with the Ann Arbor Housing Commission Home Ownership Program, Ann Arbor Housing, we do not uh, provide down payment assistance. What we provide is monthly assistance towards the family's mortgage. So it works very similar to the rental program. However, it's for purchasing of a home. So as a poll, so instead of the payment going towards rent, the payment actually goes towards the mortgage. So I would ask that any of you please visit our website if you'd like to have more information about the home ownership program. Um, the the voucher program, the voucher home ownership program can be combined with practically any mortgage product that's out there. Um, I want to mention that we again we partner with a number of agencies and departments throughout the community. So we've worked directly with. Washtenaw County and their home buyers programs, rural development, um, urban development. We've also partnered with Habitat for Humanity. A number of our Section 8 rental participants have converted their voucher into home ownership and actually purchased Habitat homes. We've used um, Old National, for an example, as well as Flagstar Bank um, and a number of other lenders throughout the community to uh, provide our families with affordable mortgages without predatory lending. And it's really just a great product, um, especially when you can consider that the program can be layered with uh, practically any mortgage product that's out there. Um, one of the things that I think is really important about the home ownership program that I'd like to mention is there is, it's not a loan. It's not a loan, it's not a grant, and the families do not have to pay any of the um, funding back to the Housing Commission in the event that they sell the home. Um, the Home Ownership Program is a 15-year program for our participants, and it is um, a great opportunity for families to build assets. We do require our families to participate in home buyer education. So we send our families directly to Habitat for Humanity for home buyer education, but we also encourage them to participate in any home buyer education workshop that they're interested in. And we can accept that certificate as long as the um, home ownership education provider is HUD certified. Um, Again, as I mentioned, the, the funding for the Housing Choice Voucher Home Ownership Program is not a loan, it's not a grant, so our families do not have to pay any of those monies back. And uh, we do require a buy-in from the participant, which is essentially 1% of the cost of the home. And that, that buy-in can be combined with their, um, any monies that they spend on the earnest deposit, the any uh, money that they spend out of pocket for a closing cost or a independent inspection, <clears throat> we're extremely flexible in regards to the monies that the um, participant places towards the purchase of the home. And, that, and that's not on top of any additional requirements from other um, mortgage products, for example, um, Amy mentioned that there's a, a product where they require the families to have 3% down. Uh, well, obviously that 3% exceeds our 1%. So for example, the family would automatically uh, meet our requirements by paying that 3% towards um, the program that Amy mentioned. For the most part, that is about it. Um, again, I do want to encourage you to visit our website to receive more information um, about any of the programs that we have available, our rental program, our home ownership program. Um, we work with several community partners in regards to um, trying to house homeless families as well as veterans. <clears throat> And there, and, and with that said, 
those community partners, we know that there are some struggles that our landlords have. So we're trying to uh, collaborate and create a portal where landlords can actually participate in these various programs and receive um, added assistance. Um, for example, we may be able to assist with security deposits, <clears throat> excuse me. In addition to security deposits, we may be able to assist with um, damages to, to the unit beyond normal wear and tear. So if you have any questions or you um, are, are working with um, anyone who wants to become an investor, I certainly encourage you to please contact us um, go to our website. We have a community resources page on our website that we, are, we keep up to date and we have links to various uh, agencies and programs that, again, support um, individuals who want to participate in these programs, invest in these programs, um, learn more information about these programs, and um, we are trying to make sure that any of the services that we're providing, um, that, that that service is provided in, in such a way that is friendly <clears throat> um, and easy to understand. So if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call or check out our website. Thank you. Thank you, Anisha. We are ending right on time. We want to be respectful of everyone's time. If you do have any questions, you can put them in the chat. We'll stay on probably for another two to three minutes, or you can email any other presenters that were here today um, or myself, and we will make sure that you have uh, proper uh, responses in a timely manner. Are there any direct questions that someone would like to have right at, answered right at this moment? Okay. Um, so with that being said, again, please feel free to email myself at mjtownsendrealty at gmail.com, or you can email any of the presenters here today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Taryn. I want to thank the community for coming out today. And we just want to make sure that you are properly informed and educated about all the resources that are available here in Washtenaw County, as well as information about Ypsilanti Community Schools. Thank you, and I wish you all to have a great week. Taryn? So thank you everyone for coming on. Um, thank you to the YCS team for presenting great information and all of Janice's visitors and guests that came on that are in the realtor world. Um, this is an exciting time for new homeowners, for the community. Um, everyone did a great job presenting, so I truly appreciate your efforts. Um, I'm going to send it off to Superintendent Alina Zachary Ross just to say any last words before we have a great Friday afternoon. Absolutely. Again, just thank you, um, Taryn. Thank you, Janice, for putting this together. Wow, was it not informative? Um, I hope you learned something about Ypsilanti Community Schools that you will share with others. I know I learned a lot about the housing opportunities and that's super helpful for us, um, not only for our staff who are looking many times to find housing, but also to our parents. So thank you for this. We're gonna connect again and have our administrators and staff learn from you. Mm -hmm. um, this is the, the one thing that I've taken away is the fact that we are certainly community and what we always say, we're stronger together. So thank you for being a part of this togetherness of making Ypsilanti the destination to be. Thank you, everyone. Have a great and safe week. And remember to wear your mask. Thank you. Right. Thank you Bye -bye. all. Bye-bye.
All right, thanks, Janice. Good job. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna take sure a power nap. Huh? You took a power nap. <laughs> I gotta take a power nap and then go look at a property. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go look at a property. <laughs> thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. It was good. Take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye.